Well, welcome to On The Way. I'm Pastor Kevin. I'm here with Pastor Jeff. And however, and wherever you may be listening, we're so glad you're tuned in today. Whether you're listening on the radio, you're listening on your favorite podcasting app, or you're watching via YouTube, we're so glad you're tuned in today. Pastor Jeff, today is a great day for two big reasons. Yeah, today is uh today is well it's Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday. Yeah. Happy Resurrection yeah, Day. Happy man. Resurrection Day to the you. The day too. like no other. That's right. Yeah. The day that changed history. It really and did. the future. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And it's also a big day for another reason. Why don't you tell our listeners yeah, why? Yeah, well, today is uh is the one year anniversary of the first airing of the uh, on the way radio show. Can you believe that? Yeah. We've been doing this for yeah. one year. That is crazy. And man, what a year it has been. <laughs> 52 weeks. Whew. Yeah, definitely. It's been quite a year. I mean, think about it. It feels like it's been about three, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, boy, isn't that the case? <laughs> yeah. And we're so glad. It's so great oh. to hear from our listeners. And yeah, we're so really glad is. that uh, you rate and review and share. <laughs> this program helps yeah. us to get the word out. That yeah. mean a lot to us. But, you know... Today, Easter Sunday, is the most celebrated event, I mm. think, in in history. Over <clears throat> a billion people today will celebrate Easter Sunday. And what we really want to talk about is how is something that happened thousands of years ago mm. still so impacting the planet today? Yeah, I mean, it is kind of amazing to think that some this one event, <laughs> you know, it's kind of it changed the calendar, hmm. it changed everything, and it's funny that the the calendar counted up to this, and now it's counting away from it, and this huh. one particular event changed everything, and and it's we need to talk about that. And, and you know, there are over a hundred <laughs> references in the New Testament, mm. and thousands of references in secular history mm. to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but mm-hmm. you know, if Christ had not been raised from the dead, 1 Corinthians 15 says that our faith is is useless. It's pointless, yeah. It's pointless. Yeah. Uh, that that Think about it. If Christ hadn't raised from the dead, if there wasn't something called Easter Sunday, we really have nothing to believe. Mm. All the martyrs of church history have died in vain. Right. Uh, anything yeah. called Christianity is really useless. Yeah. We, yeah. we have no hope. And, you know, if Christ hadn't been raised from the dead, quite frankly, all the money that's been spent on church buildings has been a waste. Yeah. And yeah. people should have just slept in today and not got up and went maybe <laughs> to Easter Sunday services. Right. It's like, it's like we, we always say, or we say it a lot, that, uh, you know, if, if the resurrection didn't happen, Christianity is kind of a bad hobby. <laughs> <It's> a bad <laughs> you know? I mean, you got to get up early, you got to fight with the kids, and all of that, and get to church, find a good place to sit go eat somewhere, and it's just kind of exhausting, really. But the resurrection makes it kind of worth it. And, and you know, the amazing thing to me, George Gallup uh, did survey, and he found that 84% of people who do not attend church, 84% of people who do not attend church Mm. still believe that Jesus rose from the dead. It, it's really an hmm. accepted fact uh, most of the world, certainly here in the United States of America. Yeah, but what's interesting about it, and, and I heard one uh, historian or one commentary comment about this, that if the resurrection is true, most, most people don't debate it, and they would really believe it if it wasn't for two things. First, that it was a very unusual event. Hmm. Obviously, there's not very many people who have risen from the dead. Right. There's not very many people who have have said they were going to rise from the dead and then actually did it. <laughs> yeah. You know, so we've got a, a bunch of things that are kind of unusual. And then second, the reason people a lot of times don't acknowledge it is because if you really believe that the resurrection of Jesus happened, it's it would have to change everything about the way you live. Exactly. And, and you know, there, there are at least 15 historical references to Jesus meeting people and touching people and interacting with people and eating with people after he had risen from the dead. But I guess the question is, why does it really matter? Why is it such a big deal? How, how can an event that happened thousands of years ago still affect mm. our daily lives today? I think it's important because the fact that there was a resurrection 
means that there was a death. Mm. So you, you can't have a resurrection without a death, you know? And, and, and a lot of people don't think about it, but there's really two basic types of death. Yep. The Bible speaks of this. The yeah. one we're most familiar with is physical death. Yeah. You know, the Bible says that one day me and one day you, one day mm-hmm. all of us will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, yeah. The Bible says that it is appointed unto man once to die. At some, po- de- some point, we will take our last breath, mm-hmm. our brain activity will cease, and we will die Physically, but the Bible also mm-hmm. refers to another kind of death. Yeah, well, Romans 6 talks about the wages of sin is death. And, and he's not believe, talking about there, once I sin, that's it, I'm going to yep, die. I'm going to die. No, it's not a physical death at that point, it's a spiritual death. But we also see, even in Revelation 20, that's talked, and that is called the second death. Hmm. So there are two deaths, there's the physical and the spiritual death. Right, and yeah. and when we think of Easter and we think of you know, surviving the challenges of life, one of the greatest challenges to overcome is overcoming death. That's what makes Jesus' resurrection so (laughs) life-changing and so defining of a moment. And isn't that what isn't that what people are all about? Mm. It's like I want to put this cream on me so that I'll <laughs> I'll live longer. Or or if you just sniff this essential oil, yeah. it'll make you live longer, right? Yeah. <laughs> or I had if, to throw the essential oils. If I oils spend a few there. more minutes exercising or if right, I don't yeah, eat that yeah. chocolate cake or or that whatever dessert is my favorite, right. you know, yeah. it'll it'll if I reduce my stress in uh-huh. my life. <laughs> and in light of eternity, really uh, James and, and other places in Scripture tell us that our life is just like like a cloud. It's like a wisp of of air, water vapor that's there for a minute and it's gone. And we spend so much time worrying about this one little physical existence that we we kind of ignore the eternity that we're going to have one day after that, you know. And we 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 miss that. We miss that point. Yeah, and and when we think of you know. Death, obviously, death is foreign to all of us. You know, uh, God created us to live forever, and the truth is, everyone lives forever somewhere. The only question is mm, where, yeah. and that's why we often talk about here on the way that we're all on the way somewhere. Mm. The only question is where, and Jesus himself said, There is a way. Yep. And a way can be known, and the way is clear. And by rising from the dead, Jesus really proved some things. Mm. He, he he really demonstrated and nailed down some some of not only who he was, but really w- what he taught. Yeah, yeah. Jesus he proved who he was. He proved that he was who he claimed that he wa- he claimed to be in John 11, 25, which is kind of the passage that you were referencing. He mm. says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Right. And that's, you know, that's a, that famous passage is a passage that maybe a lot of times pastors use at funerals, especially mm-hmm. if the one that had died physically was a, a believer, was a Christian. Right. And the truth is that we will all live forever one day. But mm. when we think about Easter and on this exciting day, probably, you know, the I mean, this is this in the church world, it's like Super Bowl yeah, Sunday yeah, and yeah. and the final four <laughs> the and they fingers come 500. out. You know, I mean, yeah. it is all in one. <laughs> and when we get back after the break, I know we want to dive into a little bit about mm. what Easter actually proves and the importance of it. Yep. We'll be right back after this short break. Have you been enjoying On The Way with Pastor Kevin and Pastor Jeff? If so, then feel free to check us out wherever you listen to your podcast for more episodes. For any more information, please check out our website at www.fincastlebaptist.org slash OTW. Or you can send us an email at OTW at fincastlebaptist.org. That's OTW at fincastlebaptist.org. Now back to On The Way with Pastor Kevin and Pastor Jeff. Well, welcome back to On The Way. We are celebrating today our one-year broadcast of the On The Way 
podcast, broadcast. It's kind of more program, yeah, it's YouTube. Kinda, it's it's kind of changed now. over. We need to put all those into one word or something. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. But um, happy anniversary. Hard Rady to believe. Cast and, tube or and we love doing it. Hopefully our yeah. audience can kind of tell we enjoy that. <laughs> and hopefully we, we appreciate all the kind words yeah. that so yeah, many people are really sending us an encouragement. We really do. But we just celebrated uh, Easter at our churches. Both of our campuses had um, something we do every year the Saturday before Easter. And we uh, we celebrate that with a community Easter egg hunt. We're and, still uh, recovering. Oh my goodness! Yeah, what, what, at the Fincastle campus, we celebrated with fifty thousand eggs, and yeah. at the Highlands campus in Covington, we had what ten, twelve thousand, something yeah. like that. Unbelievable amount of eggs. Putting candy in each one of those little eggs. Our fingers are kind of sore. We're still yeah. recovering from that. And uh, and literally had hundreds, probably yeah. thousands of people on our campuses. <laughs> and uh, there was inflatables and a lot of fun things for kids to do, a community event. Yeah, but you can't have an Easter egg hunt without mm. the Easter bunny being present. Right. And the Easter bunny right. was there at both campuses right. with pictures being made and everything, which is... And you know, a lot of Christians yeah. are kind of not really into the Easter bunny, Pastor <laughs> yeah, Jeff. They're kind of... That. Kind of reminds me of a story, actually, okay. about a guy. He was driving one time, and uh, he he sees this animal coming. You know, he thinks it's a deer, but he hits the animal. Oh no! And he gets out of his car, thinking he hit the deer, and he looks mm. down, and it was the Easter Bunny. Oh no! And the basket had went everywhere, and eggs had <laughs> went everywhere, and and he's devastated. He thinks, "Oh my goodness, I have just killed the Easter Bunny." Oh. So he's sitting on the side of the road, and he he's just weeping because mm. he's run over the Easter Bunny. The Easter Bunny is obviously dead. And about that time, a lady drives up, and uh, she sees that you know there's been some kind of incident, accident, mm-hmm. and she. She gets out of her car. She says, sir, is everybody okay? He says, ma'am, no. I says, I think I've just killed the Easter bunny. <laughs> oh, no. And the lady looks down, <laughs> sees the Easter bunny in the road, and you know, he's lifeless. The basket eggs are everywhere. And mm. she says, don't worry. I know exactly what to do. <laughs> okay. And so she goes to her trunk. She gets out a can. She goes over to the Easter bunny and sprays the Easter bunny. At, at this instant, the Easter bunny just gets up all of a sudden. Starts gathering the eggs, puts them in the basket, and hops on down the road. Goes about 50 feet, turns around, and waves. Hops about 50 more feet, turns around, (laughs) waves again. Hops about 50 feet, turns around, waves again. The guy at this point is just stunned. He says, ma'am, what in the world was in that can that you sprayed (laughs) on the dead Easter bunny. Oh, we're dying to know. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, uh, you know, don't get ahead of me. And I'm so sorry. obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously <laughs> she, she turns the can around to him and it said, hair restorer adds permanent wave. Oh, my goodness. You can send those emails to otw <laughs> at fincastlebaptist.org. I a, actually wish I thought, we had a camera <laughs> on our producer right now because he is falling out of his chair, shaking his head, Trying going, not to make I noise. cannot <laughs> believe. <laughs> but I thought, I thought I was supposed to be the one with the bad jokes. Yeah, well, it's Easter, and we're oh, tired after yeah, Easter right, Sunday. Okay. So it's you're all right. Right. Well, let's get back to what does Easter prove? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Easter proves... Really, who Jesus was in John yeah. chapter eight and verse twenty-five, mm. they came to Jesus and they said, "Who are you?" And he said, "Who I've been claiming all along." Yeah. You know, the the truth of Easter is that Jesus is who he claimed to be. He mm. he made some mm. outrageous claims while he was on. I mean, he said <laughs> things like, "I am God." Mm. I am the only way to heaven. I am the savior of the world. No other religious right. leader had made or has made such claims. I mean, Buddha never claimed that. Mm-hmm. Muhammad never claimed that. And people say, well, Jesus was a good person. He was, but he's more than that. Yeah. People say, well, Jesus was a good yeah. teacher, and he was, but he was more than that. And, well, Jesus was a prophet, and he was, but he was more than that. He proved who he was by his resurrection. There have been mm. many good teachers and many good prophets and many good people, but none of them ever predicted their own resurrection from the dead and right. then actually have it. Yeah, yeah. No, none of them actually ever rose from the dead. Right. You know, yeah. And I love, <clears throat> not only does it prove that uh, he he was who he said he was, but I love that he's so 
even in John 11, where he's so compassionate, he mm-hmm. comes to the funeral of his friend, Lazarus, and Lazarus right. has died, and, and he intentionally waited a few days yeah. to allow that to happen so that he could be glorified in this way. But he's still, knowing that he's getting ready to raise Lazarus from the dead, he's still moved by their 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 compassion and their hurt and their pain, and he says you know, that he wept. The shortest verse in the Bible, John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus wept. He cried because his friends were crying. But what he told them was, you know, it's okay to be sad, but there's a resurrection coming. And, and he, he didn't say there is a resurrection and a life. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. So resurrection and life is found in Jesus. And his words proved that. His action after the cross proved that, where he raised from the dead. So... He proved who he said he was. Yeah, I mean, you know, one day that famous story where he goes into the temple and he drives out the money changers and they mm-hmm. said, you know, why are you doing this? Who gave you the authority to do this? Mm-hmm. And he basically said, well, you know, I'm God in human flesh. And they basically said, prove it. Yeah. And that's what he did when he rose from the dead. Right. He proved who he was. The resurrection proves who Jesus is mm. and who he was. But more than that, the resurrection does even more than that. The resurrection really proves what Jesus taught. Yeah. I mean, there's a, yeah. I mean, I told that very bad corny joke earlier, but you know, the, oh, there I wrote is it some, down. I'm going to use it again. <laughs> that was good. There is some humor in the resurrection story. I mean, you know, can you imagine if you'd have been one of the guys who had, you know, killed Jesus or seen him hanging on the cross and dying, and then, you know, a few de- few days later, he's walking around town. Hey, yeah. how you doing? Good to see you. Yeah. I mean, what's, can, up? <laughs> what's up? I mean, can yeah. you imagine the, oh the reaction, goodness. you know, that they had? Yeah, I, I just think about those Roman guards that were assigned to the tomb. Mm-hmm. You know, that was like the, the Navy SEALs of right. that day. I mean, these weren't like... Like doofus heads, right? right? These dudes were trained in battle. They were they were the elite of the elite, and they were stationed on this tomb so that the the te- the disciples wouldn't come and steal his body, right? And then they all of a sudden the, the stone rolls away, and Jesus appears, and they fall down like they're dead. Mm. Imagine what it would take to make a Navy SEAL that scared, right? To fall down. The resurrection proved that that. Jesus was who he was or who said he was, but it also proved what he taught. Right. You know, he he said, if you hold on to my teaching, Mm. then you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. And if there's one thing that Mm. people are looking for today, Pastor Jeff, I think it's freedom. You know, it's freedom from worry and freedom from bitterness and Mm. freedom from guilt and depression and addiction and fatigue and anger and stress. I mean, we're we're just looking for freedom, but most people aren't really free. They're they're just existing. They're not really living. They're just existing. Well, and what they call freedom Mm. is oftentimes more bondage. You know, they, they look for freedom in all kinds of things, freedom right. in, in alcohol, mm. and that creates a bondage, or freedom in drugs, and that creates a bondage, and freedom even in sometimes relationships. Yeah, and when we get back after the break, we can really talk about what is the truth mm. that will set you free? Yeah. Well, what is just some of the truths that Jesus taught that will bring freedom on this Easter Sunday? We'll mm. be right back after this short break. You've been listening to On the Way with Pastor Kevin and Pastor Jeff. We'd love to invite you to Fincastle Baptist Highlands Campus. We are excited for you to join our church family. With programs and events for men, women, kids, youth, and the general church, you are sure to find a place to belong and feel connected to our community. On Sundays at 9.30 a.m., we have connect groups where you can study the Bible and share life experiences. Then, at 10.45 a.m., join us for our in-person service with live worship and a message from one of our pastors. If you have kids, we've got you covered. Your children can join us for a biblical time of lessons. Kids Church happens at the same time as our main services, so both you and your child can hear the Word of God. Our youth don't get left out on Sundays either. On Sunday evenings at 6 p.m., Fancastle Students Ignite happens. This is a great time of fellowship 
games, and study in God's Word. There are a lot more events happening at Fincastle Baptist, and for more information, visit us at www.fincastlebaptist.org slash highlands. Now, back to On the Way with Pastor Kevin and Pastor Jeff. Well, welcome back to On The Way. I'm Pastor Kevin. I'm here with Pastor Jeff. And uh, happy Resurrection Sunday. We trust that you'll have a great Easter Sunday, spending time with your family or Mm -hmm. friends. And uh, if you haven't done so already, maybe spending some time in church somewhere. We've been talking about, Pastor Jeff, about Easter and the Resurrection. And what difference does it make? And we said it really matters. I mean, why does it matter? And what did we come up with? Well, we said that Easter Easter proves some things to us, mm. you know, and it, and it we all want proof of things, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Easter proves, first of all, who Jesus was. Yeah, he said he was the Son of God. He said that he would rise from the dead. He said it proves who he claimed to be, and it also proved what he taught. <clears throat> you know, and right. he said, if you yeah. hold on to my teaching. You'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And we talk about how Mm. everybody's looking for freedom. So we have just five basic truths that Jesus taught that really really relates to all of us today here. Yeah, and, and, you know, ultimately, everyone is looking for truth Mm. and, and for freedom. And, uh, but really, you know, freedom is really only found in one place, and it's only found in Jesus. And uh, we see that over and over again. But uh, as Easter proves what Jesus taught, well, what did Jesus teach? Well, the first thing I think he taught was that God made each one of us for a purpose. He's got a, a plan for your life and my life, and are we going to fulfill that plan? Are we going to do what he's, he's laid out for us to do? Psalm 139 talks about that. There's not a day of our life that, that God hasn't already planned out for us. Yeah, it, it's so many times we have a tendency to think we're just here, you know, breathing air and taking up space. Yeah. But actually, yeah. God has a plan and a purpose. He said, I know the plans I have for you, mm. says the Lord. And uh, God has a plan for you. Know, it proved Jesus taught that God has a plan. God has a purpose. And it's not a negative thing. Sometimes we say that, like, you know, when something bad happens, we go, well, you know, God must have a plan. You know, oh. you get you get uh, run Don't over you by a that? car, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, what that. happened well, to me? You know, it's all part God of God's had plan, a plan, brother. You know, and that's not helpful. No, <laughs> you it's know, not. When people say it's that not to you, all. that's not helpful. All things work together for good. Right. And, I don't and like And all that. of those things are true, but it's God has a plan for my life, but it's mm. good. And it's his perfect plan. Yeah, and so yeah. Jesus taught that. Right. What else is yeah, just some well, basic I mean, things? If we believe that God has a plan for us, then it's obvious that the second thing is true, that God loves us. <laughs> you know, I I, uh, I love the most famous verse in the Bible. And we recently together heard a speaker talk about the little word so. Yeah, yeah. God oh, so, good. so love the world. I I love what Paul wrote in Ephesians, in Ephesians, uh, where he said, I pray that you may have power to grasp how wide and long Mm. and high and deep is the love of Christ. Yeah. yeah. You know, that that if we really understood that, that God not just loves us, sometimes we think, well, you know, God loves us. That's kind of what he does. You know, God is love. But God Mm. so loves loves us. And on Easter Mm. Sunday, if you hear nothing else today, God loves you no matter who you are, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done. Easter proves that God's love Mm. is available for you today. Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, (laughs) but you know, a lot of times you see this this ideal thing out there Mm. and you think, oh, well, I'll never be able to attain to that. But the truth of the matter is, God made you for a purpose. God loves you, and you can know Him personally. That's the third thing that Jesus taught us was, if you know me, you've known the Father, and you can know God in a personal way. He's not some distant deity out there. Right. But right. He, he, he said, you know, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. 
you know, my those that follow me, we can actually know him. He yeah, is yeah. a friend that sticks closer than a brother. So many times mm. when we have a concept of God, we picture him as so far away, but actually he wants to live in our hearts, in our lives. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's a personal thing. It's mm. This is one of the things that separates Christianity yes. from most every other religion in the world. Every other religion, say, the God of that religion says, you come to me. Yes. You work hard. You climb these mm. stairs. Yes. You fulfill these things in your life, and you come to where I am, and then I might make you something else. But our Christianity and Jesus taught, no, no, you can't go to where God is. But John 3.16 teaches us that God came to where we were, and we can know that in a very personal and real way. And that's really the only thing that makes the difference in this world is do you have that personal relationship with Jesus and God? Yeah, so Jesus taught that God made us for a purpose, Yeah, that God actually loves us even when we mess up, even when we blow it, mm. that we can know God personally. And really, that's because Jesus taught that we can be forgiven and really have a fresh start. We, we mm. can be forgiven. Yeah. If Jesus would still be in the grave, the cross would have been a waste. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It would have, I mean, he would have failed in his goal. Yeah, of redeeming us and and bringing us back from under the the penalty of sin. And First John one nine says, if you confess your sins, he will forgive you. Colossians two says that he has forgiven our sins. He's taken it away and he's nailed it to the cross oh. in his own body. I love that imagery. You yeah, know, he's nailed it to the cross with his own body. Yeah, and, and and that's why as he hung on the cross, as we just remembered, you know, this past Friday we caught Good Friday. Yeah. Well, yeah. Why is it good? I mean, of all the uh, days, there's only one day of the 365 days that we refer to <laughs> as good. Yeah. Why, why is it good? It's good because Jesus accomplished what he mm. set out to do, and that was to pay for our sin, and we can mm. be forgiven. And when I think of Easter and what Easter proves, probably the yeah. best news about Easter is... Yeah, the best news about Easter is it's not just for this life. Mm. <laughs> you can go to heaven when you die. That's uh, the last thing that, well, Jesus taught a bunch of things. But mm. these five that we're pointing out, God made you for a purpose. God loves you. You can know this God that loves you and made you for a purpose in a pers personal way. You can be forgiven and start over. These are things that Jesus taught. And he also taught that you can go to heaven when you die. But he also taught very plainly that not everybody goes to heaven. It's true. You know, that's the misnomer today. Oh, well, you know, I'm a good person. I'm not as bad as so-and-so. Mm. You know, at the end, you know, God looks at all my good deeds and looks at all my bad deeds. And if all right. the good outweigh the bad, then he lets me in. Yeah, that's actually not what he taught. Not at all. He taught the opposite of that. Yeah. He taught that everything we do is bad, mm. but all that Jesus did for us is good, and we rely on his goodness when we accept what he did on the cross. His good things, the righteousness that he has, is applied to our account, an accounting term, and our debt is paid through his sacrifice. And there's no better day mm. than Easter Sunday Pastor mm. Jeff, for our listeners to make sure yeah. of their eternal destiny that we can know, as I like to say all the time, that we know that we know mm. that we're going to heaven one day. We don't have to yeah. hope so. We don't have to think so. We don't have to be pretty sure. We can know mm. because Jesus rose from the dead that I will go to heaven one day. Yeah, and, and Jesus' resurrection guarantees that we have a resurrection coming one day. Mm. And it's important for us to decide, are we going to be part of the resurrected that are resurrected to glory mm. or the other way? And, and I hope that you will. And we, we as, as, a, as pastors, it's our goal. We want people to know about God, to grow in Him, to live for Him. And, and that's, that's what we're here for. And we want to make sure that you find yourself on the way to heaven if we can help you with that, please send us an email. The emails will be the email address will be at the close of this broadcast. Thank you for listening. God bless you and happy Easter. You've been listening to On the Way with Pastor Kevin and Pastor Jeff. Do you have a question for the pastors? Feel free to email us at otw at 
To listen to more On The Way, visit fincastlebaptist.org slash on the way. Or subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for joining us while you are on the way.